Hello, girlfriend. Today it's all about girl talk. Episode number four. Welcome to the Keep It 100 Girl podcast. Today marks day four of the Educating Her series. Educating her means that we got six days left, y'all, and I'm educating one female college freshman at a time. If you're just getting wind of this series, you know what? You got to rewind a few because we are educating you college female freshmen attending HBCUs from day one and beyond. So the problem in reality is that college can be the beginning and end of your naivety, the innocence, and even embarrassing situations that you've never ever dealt with before. I call them situations. Some succeed and some don't. Either way, you're going to be tested and you're going to hear them all reveal their aha moments. In order for you female freshmen to connect with the realities of college life, I am connecting you with HBCU alum who are paying it forward to freshmen by sharing their aha moments and mother freaking girlfriend advice. In today's episode, I've asked students to talk and walk with me like I'm your go-to girlfriend. Next, the game changers. I asked sophomores, juniors, and seniors from both Morgan State and Howard University to name something your mother didn't tell you but your girlfriend in college did, especially during a freshman year. But more so, I want to know what took them off their game. Because this first year of college was like a huge cultural shock at me. It's like a really big eye opener. Be prepared for what you're going to see. And like I said, be smart. Don't do anything you don't want to do. Don't do anything that you don't want to do. All right, so it's all the girl stuff they didn't know before college. And I want you to show and tell me too. You can write and tell me how this changed your life. You can reach me at Nina at NinaBabel.com. That's babe with an L. All right, so in this episode, you're going to hear five things. Number one, the shockers. Number two, the young and dumb mistakes that we all do in college. Number three, relationship awareness. Number four, the realities of sex and drugs. Number five, you're not the same person anymore, boo. Ladies, are you ready to keep it 100? My hand is raised. How about yours? Are you ready to keep it 100? Ready to keep it 100, girl. Oh, Nina, I keep it 100, baby. Yes, I'm ready to keep it 100. I'm ready to keep it 100, girl. You know I'm going to keep it 100. (laughs) All right, next we're going to talk about the shockers and the R's of womanhood. I didn't realize how many girls were like on birth control. That that was a surprising one. So did they start before college? Yeah, like before college, like they said high school, some people. Whoa. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> I was not even into that at, at, at all, so. What are you using tampons in high school? <laughs> yeah, like I, Yeah, me neither. (laughs) I'm kind of shocked by that. So I rounded up these ladies to talk about college peer pressure at Howard and the whole concept behind popping out. All right, so the whole thing is this. Freshman girls look like juniors and seniors right out of the gate from day one. These girls reveal. It's funny because you think that, like, the freshmen, they wouldn't really know all about that, like, dressing nice and popping out is what a term. (laughs) Okay, wait, popping out? Popping out is like standing out, to, look like you're being noticed in a way. So then I probed a little further and I'm like, okay, does this whole popping out thing apply to school or outside of the class? Okay, we talk in schoolwork or not schoolwork or both? Both, both in a way. Both. I feel like it's more mm-hmm. outside of the classroom. Yeah, with your reputation. Yeah. Mostly, and how you present yourself, really. Next, I asked these girls, okay, so did you give in to the pressure when you were a freshman, the whole popping out thing? Not really. Yeah, I think I, I dressed the same. I yeah. shorts <laughs> and shorts and stuff. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to be comfortable, you know, and mm-hmm. you can be comfortable, but at parties, you do want to kind of look nice. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Time that, you know, you try to pop out a little bit, but... On the average day, I was just chilling. The boot up mentality. Okay, we're going through the relationship awareness topic now. Where ladies give advice to female freshmen who have a boo at home and are trying to maintain that relationship in college. These girls have some words for you. 
Um, this is that's actually like a really well, it's not really personal. It's more of like I know someone who went through this. It's my roommate. Okay. She actually was in a relationship, but she had um, an open relationship in a way. So <laughs> they were able <laughs> they were able to be together, but they can still talk to other people. What? If you know what I mean? Yeah, that's how they planned it to be. But I don't know. I think that that kind of relationship doesn't work at all because as soon as she started talking to other boys, she started liking other boys, but she would get upset when her boyfriend would talk to other girls. And that was the agreement they had, but she was just upset and she just just didn't work out. The long distance boo. All right, people, this it doesn't work it's a temporary thing and me and nicole are gonna break it down for me a relationship can always go so far and it drains you like oh yes terribly (laughs) well and it drains you and how are you able to study with that on your brain that's true i don't think like the thing is like she was really failing that semester and i think a little bit of last semester because the first semester she was out of it because that's when she just went loose <laughs> and everything but i don't know what happened last semester but she's coming back i think she's yeah she's coming back well then i guess she did okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> I hope, yeah i hope so so relationships they do require a lot of commitment and especially if they're long distance that's definitely going to take a toll on you and that's a lot of trust as well like because that might even it's going to put a strain like I guess on your mind and it could put a strain on your body because you just be all depressed and sad and and that's not well in school so I recommend breaking it off or explaining where you're at right now if it's meant to come back together like if you really truly love that person you can go without being i guess your official boyfriend or girlfriend and just come back if it's meant to be because you're going to change in college so it's like just start fresh you know relationships is all about pushing each other to excel in college and you know what if you're in a relationship and you're giving in to those uncomfortable pressures it's time to step for my boyfriend now um we study we used to study a lot together but it got to a point where um, we would have to like be at different parts in the library because when we were together it was always jokey jokey like we didn't know how to just focus like we were just we we're just clowns so we would have to maybe like he'll go on the third floor on the first floor you know just do stuff like that and um I don't know, like, actually, we study a lot together and um, we help each other. Like, he's a poli-sci major. I'm a sociology major, so he's really good with writing. Writing isn't my best, you know, skill, so he helps a lot with that. Um, um, You just, like she said, discipline, self-control, definitely. Uh, At the end of the day, you're here to get your degree, so remember that first. That's number one priority. Don't get sidetracked or distracted. And if you know your significant other is doing that for you, then you really should, you know, talk to them, you know, let them know, look, I've got a paper to do. I can't go out with you today. And if they make you feel bad about it, then they're just not the right person. Because at the end of the day, you guys are both in school. Or even if one of you guys are in school, they need to see that, help you, push you there. Just push you and make sure that, you know, that you get what you came there for. Let's keep it real. Drinking and drugs is a big thing. And they're going to talk about what really happens on campus. More than 50% of people on campus smoke, whether it's tobacco or marijuana. Um, it is a big thing. And um, like I said, I came to college and it was my first time doing both or whatever. I don't I don't smoke. I do drink, though, but it, can, it it's it's very prevalent. It's out there. Everyone's doing it. It's in your face. Okay. Especially like the campus parties and stuff. Like not not even the campus party, but the off campus parties. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Especially in there. So you got to be careful for those and just be prepared for what you're going to see. She admitted to experimenting because everyone else was doing it. Don't worry about it. It happens. If we're going to keep it 100, my, I drank for my first time in college. Um, I smoked weed for my first time in college. Not good. Yeah. Um, 
like all those things are going to be in your face and you know i would i won't say i was peer pressured into any of it for some reason i just wanted to try it because everyone around me was doing it so it was just like whatever but um uh, yeah i i would say you know be smart be responsible and have responsible friends that in the case that you do decide that you want to do those things you know you have somebody there that is going to look out for you and, and have your best interest at heart just in case something was to go wrong i ask girls to reveal other pressures they may have experienced on campus so i'll let them take it from here i say i have to say drugs and a lot of alcohol that's wow. a lot of pure pressure yeah interesting like you would think like in college they would be like oh you don't want to drink that's fine but no they were actually like you have to drink like you're at this party you must drink yeah. <laughs> i've heard that so many times and like it's been so hard to just be like no because yeah and sometimes you're just handed it and you're like i'm not gonna do anything with this and yeah. just like <laughs> put it to the side Next, I took it a step further. I wanted to know what kinds of drugs students are using nowadays. Marijuana. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, people are starting to like sell pills, like what's it called? Xanax. Oh. (laughs) And and they sell Adderall as well. I knew that. They call it Addy. Yeah, they call it Addy, which is crazy. Okay, y'all, the Keep It 100 Girl Show, Girly Nation, is launching the Keep It 100 Boot Camp. I don't know whether to call it Girl Camp or Boot Camp, but you get the idea. So if you want to become better at taking charge with adulting and making those life decisions with confidence, girl, you're in the right place. My goal is to give everybody, whether it's you women and men, that muscle power you need in your day-to-day relationships, dating, friendships, love decisions, your education, and you know what? I can even help you out negotiating your next job offer. (laughs) That's right. So you're going to use the code KI100 to receive the early bird rate. And don't be asking me for no CP rate either. Are you going to visit bit.ly forward slash capital K capital I 100 boot camp. So it's KI 100 boot camp, all one word. I'll see you in a bit. Peace. All right. So if you remember in episode number one, you heard about the book bag theory and how upperclassmen use that as they're in with freshmen. Silly rabbit, this trick is for kids. At least now it is. Don't fall for these boys the first week. Do not fall from the the upperclassmen prey on the freshmen. Like, they will prey on you. And don't fall for it if you do anything. Like, I'm not going to lie. I fell for it lots of times. Don't expect guys to level up when it comes to maturity either. Because according to my mother... FYI, guys don't mature until they're 50. (laughs) So, parties, that's when they try to get you. So, (laughs) and it's like they can tell, like, oh, she's a fresh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, because it's your first college party. And they have, um, I think for the freshman year, they have like one on campus. Mm -hmm. Freshman week. It's freshman only, but. It's not. <laughs> it's not. People try to sneak in. And it's just like, let the freshmen do their thing. Why are y'all first with the freshmen? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Huh. And, uh, God, I mean, you know, guys are guys. Um, they don't think because they're in college that they're mature. Mm. They're mm. not. And, uh, um, it's a proven fact that guys take longer to mature than women anyway. So... It shows when you get to college. Like, you think you see it in high school. Like, oh, he's so immature. When you get to college, it's like 10 times worse to me. We are not going to take away the experience, but IC wants you to be smart about your choices. And don't think just because they're upperclassmen that they're more mature than the freshman boys, you know? Yes. You got to fill them out a little bit first. But I'm not even saying don't have fun. You know, enjoy your time. Like, I... Everything that I went through from freshman year up until now made me into who I am. I've learned a lot. I've been through a lot. Different, had many different experiences. I wouldn't take it away at all. Like, 
So, you know, have fun, but be smart. Partying is savage in college, but here's what happens if you're not disciplined. I lost focus um, after my freshman year, and I still, to this day, I don't know where it came from, but I was just not as focused. I was more focused on the social aspect of college rather than the educational part. And that definitely set me back a lot. And I wish I could go back and just, you know, be more serious. Guys and peer pressure go together. Hear why. I've seen a lot of my friends like fall into it, especially with guys. Um, guys can be very persistent with what they want. Um, so a lot of times they just, a lot of girls just give into it. It's like, okay, like they be so sweet and <laughs> so charming. And then once they give what they want out of you, they're gone. So mm -hmm. I've seen that a lot. Uh, so. Yeah, and I would say, you know, if you're in a situation where it's just you and a guy mm -hmm. and they're, you know, trying to get peer pressure you into, you know, right. drinking or smoking or having sex, don't, 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 don't fall into it, especially if it's someone that you don't know like that, you're not comfortable around them. Um, sometimes they use, you know, alcohol and, and drugs to get you to do what they want. So you have to stand strong. Yeah, that's important. It gets better. Partying leads to sex. Here's the sex expectations that students have in college. Well, and out there, it, I don't know if it's just college or hours, but... Yeah, I don't know. It just changes you. I asked these ladies if they chose to abstain or if they felt the pressure and how they dealt with it. I chose to abstain for um, for personal reasons, like just seeing how family has handled it. It's kind of turned me off to certain things. Um, I wasn't dating anybody, so I guess it was less of a pressure to just get out there and do it which kind of was a good thing. I mean, I got lonely sometimes, but it's like I wasn't pressured to do something that I wasn't comfortable doing. So, but um, I don't know. But living in the dorm, you hear things about people. You see so many guys coming up to the rooms with girls, and it's just like, you don't want to assume that they're going to go do you, but it's just like yeah, you don't want to have that negative feeling that they're going to do it but they're you know they're going to go through it <laughs> overall these students felt that you know people are serious about having sex in college so know this and it's crazy but like I didn't realize how how serious people were about you know getting it on because Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they will break up with you if you don't? No. It's just, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people expect you to do that when you get to college or at least as a freshman or mm -hmm. because they actually have condoms in the lobby of the boys' dorm. <laughs> yeah, and it's only in the boys' dorm, which is kind of weird in a way, but... Huh. Like they're enabled. They're just yeah, like they're just yeah. <laughs> they're just there. They're not but they're not in the girls. Right. It should be both ways. Like I guess they're setting the expectation that the boy should always be a condom, but I think it should work both ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The location of condoms at the front desk of the dorm says it all. It's readily available and free. I thought that was kind of weird because they have them like at the front desk. Mm -hmm. And you like signing your parents at the front desk too. So oh. it's, just really, it's just really weird when I thought about that. It's like, you guys just have condoms right here. Imagine <laughs> what parents are thinking. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, you're just giving my son condoms. Like, where? <laughs> But it's better to be safe than sorry, I guess you can say. But at the same time, I feel like girls need condoms too. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like, like it's it's guys to just go out there because 
there's a supply of condoms in the lobby. So if you want to get it on, just go grab one as opposed to, yeah. uh, maybe I shouldn't do this or maybe we should just wait a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's readily available. At the end of the day, ladies, seek respect, not attention. Root each other and watch each other grow. Being more serious about why I'm here, like all that fun stuff can wait, um, you know, or keep it to a minimum. It was very hard for me coming from like a sheltered home and then coming to college. So that it, that, it definitely ate me up. I'm not going to lie. If I had any advice to give to incoming freshmen, enjoy yourself, but please get those grades together. Focus, study, get some friends, go to the library, study groups, like I said, you know, remember that you're here to graduate in four years you know there's nothing wrong with being here after that but you know let that be the goal let that be the goal you know focus if you enjoyed this one let me know on twitter instagram or snapchat and you're going to use the handle at nina babel after each episode check out my free keep it 100 downloadable cheat sheet you could obtain the full version by visiting bit.ly forward slash educating her the number two At the end of the day, it's all about knowing how to keep a 100. I help both men and women revisit the ups and downs of embarrassment in their life, especially in your 20s when you're the most vulnerable. You have to figure that out together because every action has a reaction. And it's going to be connected to some other part of your life, whether it's now or down the road. This is why women listen to the Keep a 100 Girl podcast. I keep it real. I keep it true. Smooches.